everyone, Hannah here and thank you for joining me for the second session of an introduction to Zentangle. For today's session we're going to need the following materials. A black fine liner pen and if you don't have one, a black biro or a fine liner. A black pencil, an earbud but for those artists that have a tortillon or a blending stump, that will do as well. And a square piece of card. Now this is called a tile and it measures nine centimetres by nine centimetres. But if you don't have one of those, feel free just to cut a square of card or even draw in your journal or your notebook. If you would like to pause the video, go and grab the materials, settle down and sit nice and comfortable. And when you're ready, please join us. In the previous session, we learnt four tangles, which are the individual patterns. And in this session, we're going to learn three new ones. So if you would like to start with your pencil and your square card, your tile or your square in your journal then let's begin. I'm going to start by drawing a very light pencil line across the, pay, the, the tile followed by another one which is about an inch apart but it doesn't need to be too exact and then on the left hand side starting from that pencil line I'm just going to draw a line upwards I'm then going to turn my tile or my square piece of card round and I'm going to draw another line to follow it through to that line which looks like an L. I'm then going to turn my tile again and I'm going to repeat this on the opposite side. So as you can see we've now got three separate sections that we can tangle in. Moving on to our fine liner black pen or a biro if you haven't got one. Along that first pencil line I'm going to draw and cover it. And then on the inside of that first line I'm going to mirror it, which is maybe a couple of millimetres apart, but don't worry too much. I'm then going to turn my tile upside down and I'm going to repeat the exact same. So there's the first line. And there's the second line. On top of the outside line, I'm just going to draw some very small circles. And you'll notice that they touch each other and they also touch the line. Drawing circles can actually be very relaxing and it can force you to slow down as you'll notice that the quicker I draw, the more oval shaped my circles are. I'm then going to turn that tile upside down and I'm going to repeat it on the opposite side. While you're doing this, slow down, concentrate on your breathing. So now we have that finished, from the bottom corner I'm going to draw a wiggly line. Now I don't want too many wiggles in it but that's, uh, that's about the way I like it. And then choosing either the top section or the bottom section, I'm going to draw straight lines 
of about equal distance apart, all going in the same direction in that same section. And again, you'll need to slow down and you'll need to focus on keeping those lines going in, in the same direction and of a similar distance apart. And if at any point you feel I'm going too quickly, please feel free to pause the video. I'm then going to turn it this way, so sort of on the di diamond shape. And then in, the, in the, the section I haven't done, I'm going to draw lines, but going in the opposite direction. And what I mean by this is that they're going to form almost an arrow so they're not going in the same direction. And once I've put the first ones in, I can turn my tile up the right way because I know which orientation they're going. And again, I'm trying to keep these lines a similar distance apart. And also going in the right direction. I don't want them to start turning off. All that's left with this particular tangle to do now is to add some shading. So if you would like to decide whether you want this one at the top or this one at the bottom and then using your pencil along the centre center wobbly line I'm just drawing some light pencil. Now I've chosen to put my shading in the bottom line so when I'm doing my smudging I'm not going to be smudging any pencil above that centre line and I'm going to use my earbud and notice that I'm gripping it close to the tip because then I've got more control. Those of you that have tortillons or blending stumps you'll know exactly what to do. And you'll notice now that that shading makes it look almost two-dimensional. So moving on to the next pattern, I'm going to start in this corner but it's entirely up to you and I'm going to draw a grid. So I'm starting drawing lines, they're about a, a centimetre apart, all going that way and then turning it round and I'm going to draw them in the opposite direction. Um, and some of you will notice that they're only half here. That, that really doesn't matter. So starting with this one in the bottom corner, I'm going to draw like half, it looks like half a grain of rice, I think but it's half a circle and I'm going to follow that up and I'm keeping to the right hand side of each of those individual squares and I'm drawing half a circle or half an oval. I'm then going to turn it upside down and because it's upside down I'm going to stick with the right hand side and I'm going to finish that part and you'll notice that when I do that it forms what looks I think like a full grain of rice. Now some of them will be longer and some of them will be shorter it just depends upon how you drew your original grid base. I'm then turning it to the side and I'm starting again keeping to the right, although those of you that are left-handed, you might start on the left, in which case that doesn't matter as long as you stay with the left-hand side each time round. I'm then turning it upside down and I'm going to repeat, you've guessed it, on the right-hand side. And this forms quite pretty uh, tangle in my opinion. 
We could stop there, we can leave it uh, as it is, or we can decorate it. The way I'm going to show you today to decorate is I'm just going to follow those contours on the inside of each square. And it's up to you. Some of you might like to do all of them going up first. Others might enjoy doing each individual square at a time and turning it each time. Oops, I forgot this row. How did I forget this row? And it's entirely up to you. The idea is that this is your piece of art. You do what you feel comfortable. And I find that because of the repetitive movement, I prefer to do all of the ones going in one direction and then turn round and carry on. And you'll notice the ones that are hanging off the end here, I'm not worrying too much about putting the fourth row in. Although with the ones on this side, I think I will, because I think they just fit. So that's finished uh, with the pen for that particular tangle. I'm going to show you some examples at the end where you'll see other ways to decorate the inside. But where the four grains of rice meet, using my pencil, I'm just going to draw a light circle. And then I'm going to switch to my earbud and I'm just gently teasing that pencil out. I think I might try the other end actually. And these, this shading makes that center point, I think, a focal point. But depending upon how you decorate the center of it will depend upon how you want to shade. We have one section left, so I'm going to turn this upside down. And on this one, this is a very simple one. I'm just drawing a big circle. I'm leaving a gap and I'm drawing a half a circle, a smaller circle, another half a circle, and then an even smaller circle. You can put as many circles in as you want, but leaving it this way gives you space to decorate in between. And what I mean by that is the next stage, I'm going to draw a wobbly line from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom. And you'll notice that I've avoided any of the circles. I'm then going to follow that line to the right. And I'm going to keep following that line and I'm going to keep adding wobbly lines until I hit a circle. And there I'm going to follow the line and I'm going to stop my pen at the edge of the circle and then imagine where it would come out. So almost like drawing behind. So the trick here is to remember to follow that contour of the first line and then stop when you meet a circle. Now here I've reached the end but I don't have any space above so I'm just going to draw below. And now we have this side left to do. And the easiest way I find it to do is to turn it upside down and to follow exactly the same back down. And this particular pattern always reminds me of the sea. Oh, went a bit wobbly there, but I'm just adding some of those. Now all we have left to do is to add some shading. 
And at this point, it's a good idea to decide which way you want this to be up or down. And I think I want my finished tile to be that way. So using the tip of my pencil, I'm just drawing a line underneath. And it's, it's actually almost on that line of the circle without going into it too much. <coughs> and then using my earbud, I'm just gently pulling it out. And that makes it look now that it's not just hanging in the middle of the air. And then using the side of my pencil, I'm just adding some light sort of smiley face on, on the side shapes. And then I'm just gently teasing that out. And that makes them look a bit more like an orb. So I've already, I've already decided which way I want this to go up. But for you guys, if you hold your tile at arm's distance and you turn it around each way, decide which way you like it to be up and down. And when you've decided, if you go back to your pen and we're just gonna add our signature. And this is so that you, when you come back to look at it, you can appreciate and know that it's your artwork. So when I say your signature, it can just be your initials, a little heart or a little flower, or something so that you know that it's yours. And that's our second tile finished. I'm going to show you some examples of other tiles that I've drawn. So this is the same, but you'll notice that the pencil line is much, much heavier around here. And that makes it look almost like the top of a mountain. On the inside of this tangle, you'll notice that I've coloured each of the squares in and I've dra dragged the shading out a little bit more. And on this one, I've just put heavier shading on. For this one, I've got the same three tangles, but I've just moved them around. You'll notice that there is almost like a, a sideways Z. And I've done the first tangle in both corners, but I haven't put any of the orbs around the outside. I've then done this tangle here, but you'll notice that I've just done circles and colored dots in the center. And with the shading on this one, not only have I done it at the center point, where the four meet. I've also done it around the outside. And then for the last tangle, I've done all of the long lines going that way, as opposed to the previous ones that were going up the other way. For this tile, I've used the first tangle as a border. And again, I haven't put any of the orbs in around it. And then I've just subdivided it into two triangles and I've put the other tangles in the centre. And then for the final one, I've done it in a circle. And with the first tangle around the outside, you'll notice that I've left this one free. And that's because when I did this tangle, which was the second one, I really wanted that to be the focal point. I do hope you've enjoyed this session and if you have any further questions about Zentangle please feel free to contact me. Bye for now.